Greetings everyone. This is Prosthodontics on Friday, which addresses the implanted prosthodontic treatment and the problems associated with it. Today we have with us Professor Jung Eun Kim of the Department of Prosthodontics at Yonsei University College of Dentistry. He's going to talk about clinical application of facial scan data, where we are today, and how the technology is going to evolve in the future. Greetings, Professor. We're honored to have you with us, Professor Kim. You really are the icon in digital dentistry. Thank you for coming in despite your busy schedule and treating patients. Could you please provide a brief explanation about your lecture today? Today, I'm going to talk about utilization of facial scans in clinical dentistry. I'm going to talk about how it is used and the future we are headed towards. I'm going to talk about the studies and my personal experiences. It's really interesting topic in dentistry. Really, not many people are used to this topic. That's why I look forward to your lecture. I'm sure a lot of viewers look forward to your lecture as well. Those of you watching the program from dental site, you can communicate real time using the chat screen. Leave your questions and these will be addressed. You'll also get Starbucks coffee coupons as well. For the questions that are most meaningful, they'll be selected as best questions and you'll be able to receive toothpaste and toothbrush set, which is a collaboration of Busan and Music Tiger. Study about prosthodontics and win your dental set from Busan and Music Tiger. You need to agree to marketing on dental site to be able to receive the prizes. I would like to add one more comment. Dental has added a Kakao Talk channel at the channel and get information about program schedules and events real time. I look forward to your interest and let us begin Professor Kim Jong-un's lecture. Greetings, I'm Professor Kim Jong-un from Department of Prosthodontics at Yonsei University College of Dentistry. I am honored to participate in the Prosthodontics on Friday, which is supported by Awesome Implant, and I'm honored to stand shoulder to shoulder to Professor Cho, whom I look up to. I mentioned briefly earlier, I want to talk about how facial scan data is being used clinically and what the future holds. I'm going to talk about my personal experience and what is reported in the study. This is the contents. The first is how the facial scan data is being used currently. This is a facial recognition. This is not done three-dimensionally. It captures a certain moment. It is used for banking, to unlock smartphones, and for immigration review. Personally, if you're able to look at the patient using a glass for augmented reality, you'll be able to understand the patient's characteristics more easily and you'll be able to understand what the patient feels sensitive about. I think that would be really good for treatment. There are some of you who do Facebook a lot. I'm sure you have experienced this on Facebook. When you upload photo, it recognizes faces really well. You can tag someone. Once tagged, it automatically tags that someone that point onward. Three-dimensional data is being used to, in a lot of ways. So this is an NBA basketball game. In these games, you can scan your face and make it into a character. 
facial scan data and three-dimensional facial scan data are being used as we go through COVID facial scan data is used to fabricate customized face masks these are some of the different uses that is being done these days let's look at dentistry a little bit more this is maxillofacial prosthesis this is orbital prosthesis you can utilize it in different ways this is a prosthesis utilizing facial data if there's a defect you can mirror the form of the eye on the other side and complete a prosthesis so this is the same for prosthesis for ear if there's an ear with complete form on the other side when we get a facial scan data we can scan the ear and fabricate ears like this it's a bit early but i'd like to ask you a question i'd like to ask about the accuracy of facial scans in the case of maxillofacial prosthesis patients you need to take scan and provide prosthesis if you make a maxillofacial prosthesis using the facial scan that is available today, how accurate can you make it? I've talked about prosthesis for ears and eyes. If you look at the studies, the accuracy is 0 0.5 to 2 millimeter. Compared with oral scanner, model scanner and scanners utilized for fabricating teeth prosthesis the discrepancy is quite significant yes personally for me based on my experience when you scan using facial model the accuracy is quite high when you scan face it is actually soft tissue and it's difficult for a patient to stand in a still position until the scan is over because of these factors there's discrepancy yes it's because soft tissue except for the really cheap ones out of the facial scanners that are available in the market if you use a high-end product you can not only fabricate the maxillofacial prosthesis for the patient, but also when you make aesthetic prosthesis, you can find the midline easily and it is of great help. In 1990s, I went to UCLA maxillofacial clinic and tried the nose and eyes. It's very difficult to make using silicone to replicate the other side. The big hardest part was finding the right color. After you scan the maxillofacial patient, if you replicate the other eye and apply it at the site in question, perhaps you can use 3D printer along with silicone and find the right color. Maybe that would be a good idea. As you have mentioned, in the CAT design phase, mirroring is done very nicely and in design stage, there will be no problem, but in terms of printing, it can be a little difficult to find the right color. Indeed. In the final phase, a person is suggested an expert technician is required to fabricate a natural prosthesis. Thank you for your response. Please carry on. I will now move on. What you're seeing is a 2D data. The analysis of face starts with the skeletal analysis, orthodontic or orthognatic surgery. We need to focus on the face. This is the same with the prosthodontics. We need to evaluate the skeletal relations class 1 to class 3. The cephalometric data is really good for skeletal analysis. AP cephalo is also used for enhancing our understanding. It is very important material for evaluating occlusal plane or the canting the patient has. It is very important for prosthodontic restoration. A lot of analysis is now being done three-dimensionally. Changes in profile and soft tissue can be anticipated using facial scan data after orthognathic surgery or Lufort-1 surgery.
This is also profile changes after orthognathic surgery. This can be used especially in prosthodontic treatment. In the case of denture, you make a teeth, and depending on teeth position, the lip contour changes significantly. Even if the prosthesis the patient used to have did not really fit well, and but still, if the patient was satisfied with the profile and appearance, we can use the facial scan data from that, and based on that record, when we make trial denture, we can compare the profile changes and communicate that with the patient. That's very advantageous. The 3D data, not just facial scan data, but also CT data with the development of software, you can find important landmarks using these information automatically. This can be very helpful in providing dental treatment. Let's go more specifically in the prosthodontic sphere. We use a facial scan data a lot for aesthetic prosthesis. There are many things that we need to consider when we provide prosthesis in interior area. We need to understand different characteristics of the teeth. At times, we overlook balance with the face. In terms of color, we deliver information on paper like this, but the information available here is limited and it's very difficult for the technician to understand the characteristics of the tooth. We now use digital smile design these days. Up until now, we used one frontal image of the patient. These programs have become more available over the last couple of years and a lot of effort is being done to balance teeth and the face. For color data, additional images are taken. Polarizing filter was used in this case. If you provide this data, the technicians, even though they don't meet the patient directly, they get much more information. The patient will be able to get more satisfactory prosthesis. Using digital smile design, you can film the entire face, you retract the teeth significantly, you can look at the line between pupil and the line of the nose and find the right balance with the tooth. This will become the guide in fabricating prosthesis. The downside of this is that because interior area has been retracted significantly, there are a lot of distortions around the lip and the nose. These can be downsides. Face data, even if you have one image, you can look at the form and color of the face, the tone of the skin, midline, the line between the pupil, the width between canines. There are these informations available and it's very useful for prosthesis fabrication. You can assume what the final prosthesis is going to look like on the patient so you can forego unnecessary mistakes. In the case of 3SheepCAD or ExoCAD software, small creator modules are now available. The image is 2D but you can merge 2D and 3D. You can use the image with oral scan data or the plaster model scan data together. As you can see, you can mark using green mark and find the position. You use 2D image, but it can be used for fabricating three-dimensional prosthesis. Using this image with the natural smile of the patient, you can cut out the lip and you can evaluate how the prosthesis is going to look like later. The downside of this is because this is a merge between 2D and 3D, you cannot really see how the prosthesis is going to look like from the sideways and how the occlusal plane is going to be like. It's going to be difficult to look at dynamic occlusion. There are these limitations. Even in small design softwares, there are a lot of 3D solutions available. As mentioned, if you use 3D solution, you can look at the lateral view or view from the bottom. Evaluation can be done in different views so you can get practical help. Can I ask you another question? Yes. As you have shown, 
the aesthetics in the interior region and the color when you match it if you use AI to find the right color AI would provide certain shades by default and the surgeon can fine-tune that is the kind of program available these days in terms of teeth design there are a lot of softwares available. The contour, yes. You can mirror the adjacent teeth form. You can also consider the antagonist form. So design can be adjusted and limitations can be set. A lot of these programs have been introduced, but in terms of shade or color, I believe this is an area that needs improvement. The scientific equipments. There's a lot of available products like Shade Scan. Even if we use those products, there's no coherency. The results, they fluctuate in terms of quality. Based on my understanding, it does not have AI-based engine. So I believe there's a lot of room for improvement. Thank you. Let's take a look at the chat screen. There are a lot of questions. ID 45685. I look forward to today's program, Dr. Kim Jong-un. I look forward to your lecture. If you smile, you get luck. I look forward to today's theme. I'm going to look for a question. Mint candy. I hope I get selected as best question. If you raise your question, we'll take that into consideration. ID Yeonjishi. The average error using AI is 1.5 millimeter. Therefore, in terms of setting a causal height in a dentalist patient, if you analyze balanced facial form, do cephalometric analysis, Willis method, and analyze the anatomical form of TMJ. If you gather all that information based on AI, is there a way where we can get that vertical height automatically? It seems like a difficult question. Will we be able to get a vertical height automatically? Thank you for your question. This is something that I think about hard. I do a lot of research using AI, and this is something of my interest. I tried to gather a lot of data of the dentalist patient like facial scan data and CT and I'm also researching what you have asked about. When I get tangible results, perhaps I'll appear once again. You have to appear on our program once again. Based on my understanding, the factors that you have mentioned, they're very important. Using these data to automatically set the inter-arch relation for a dentalist patient. Such a solution is not available. Vertical height CR, if you can get that automatically, it'll be wonderful. I believe this will be available soon because a lot of people are interested in this area and there are many potential. In the areas that I'm researching, I believe there's potential where teeth can be set up and I believe it this is possible. How long do we have to wait? Well, I'll do it ASAP. Thank you. ID and killer. Today's topic is somewhat different. ID Toto. How long does it take to scan? And in the case of eyes with a lot of movements, is it automatically adjusted? What is the difference upon scanning patient smiling and in normal state. In terms of time, I just cover the eyes because the equipments that we use at times emit strong light, so patients express discomfort. I have the patients close their eyes or wear sunglasses when we do scanning. In the case of time, depending on the equipment that is used, it may differ. There are products where 10 minutes, if 
sufficient and in another type it's like an oral scanner the patient stands still and does the machine move by itself you can have the arm put in so that it automatically rotates or the surgeon can rotate it and get the lower job in this case it takes longer time the scanner may take over one minute so 10 seconds to one minute it may vary depending on the system i didn't really get the final question so what is the difference when the patient smiles and when the patient doesn't is there a difference there The skin process is actually the same. However, when the patient is smiling, it is difficult for the patient to maintain the same expression. And therefore, there are many limitations in this end. Unless you're a trained actor, it will be very difficult to maintain that smile throughout the duration. There is a method which is called photogrammetry and uh, Several cameras are synchronized and at once images taken from different directions and I believe because it takes only a short period of time it may be possible because there are factors where the patients feel uncomfortable so you need to consider that. I believe we have addressed all the questions thus far. Please carry on with your lecture. Yes, I'll carry on. Let's talk about oral scanners, which a lot of people use. When you do full mouth scanning, the occlusal plane is quite uneven and the tooth axes are different from each other. When you fabricate prosthesis only using oral scan data, there are many difficulties. This is just some of the examples. In this case, the facial scan data can be used in different ways. If you look at this patient, the facial midline and teeth are quite apart. You need to consider this. If you only deliver oral information to the lab, there are going to be many challenges for the lab technician. In communicating with lab technicians, sending facial scan data would be of great help. I believe this is something that needs to be delivered. Facebook has been serving that purpose for a long period of time. You analyze dynamic occlusion. Let's talk about Facebook. Register the relation between hinge axis and the maxilla. You use the articulator for mounting and you can get somewhat information. However, this is not complete information. Therefore, oral scanners can be utilized in more ways. Let me summarize the benefits of facial scan. You can merge different 3D data. You can fabricate prosthesis using multi-source data. You can also get different types of facial scan data, like when the patient is in rest state or when smiling, when the patient has a CO or CR bite. Different scan data can be gained. You can merge the scan data. You can also merge arch scan data and CBCT as well. Accurate merging is possible. And it also serves as virtual face bow. As mentioned before, you can analyze a causal plane and it's very helpful in that end. Unlike images, you can look at how it is on the lateral view. You can check how the prosthesis is going to look depending on different angles and you can analyze existing dentition. It really helps in communication with the patient and lab technicians and I believe this is really useful. I'm going to talk about how to get the facial data. Different ways have been introduced. In CBCT, you can get soft tissue information. On top of soft tissue data, you can overlap the images. You can use images taken from three different directions and overlap it and use it like a facial scan data. Let's talk about photogrammetry. 
A person is inside a cage, and there are so many different cameras in all these different angles, 360 degrees, and images taken at the same time. Three-dimensional reconstruction can be done using a software. You can use these to get 3D data. The benefit of this is that you can get extremely precise data. Even in local companies, they have cage systems. You can not only get the facial profile, but that of entire body. What is most frequently used is the optical scanner. The equipments that you see are the equipments that we have at my dental clinic. On the left, you see Bell Luce's 3D scanner. The patient is turning his head left and right slightly within short period of time, almost within 10 seconds. Images can be taken on the right is Arctic Space Spider. The patient remains still and the surgeon turns the scanner in different directions. There are different types of taking images and there are different options and the price range varies. I use a lot of scanners. There are some issues when you do scanning, as shown depending on the type of scan. In certain scan, the facial profile can be very natural, but it may not really reflect the tooth form. As you can see, the anterior teeth are not properly reflected. There can be scatter and scanning may not be done properly. You can put some powder on teeth to prevent the scattering. You can also use jigs. At the present, if you put the scan data and merge it, the accuracy will decrease significantly. There are many ways to solve it. This is something that is commercialized by a certain company. You can have landmark on top of your head like a headband. And on dentition, you can have the patient to bite on jig to get a silicone bite and do scanning. If you scan jig bite and facial scan data and model scan data, you can merge it well. These are utilized frequently. As mentioned, this is commercialized product. We can design our own. You don't have to use that. You can design the jig and use it for facial scans. I believe it is necessary to use a jig when you scan facial scans and teeth. Headbands. You don't really need the landmark on your head because there is T-zone where it transitions from the eyebrow to the nose. I don't believe the landmark on top of your head is an absolute necessary. At times, people use oral scanner for facial scans. Oral scanners are excellent for scanning teeth. Teeth scanning is done excellently, and facial scans can be done very nicely. You need to take a facial scan with a scanner with a very limited scope, so it may take a lot of time. The downside is that patient needs to maintain his or her expression with teeth exposed for an extended period of time. You can center on the eyebrow and nose and check the midline, and the profile and contour of the face can also be check the using this tool. Full arch tooth scan. You can merge it as shown. You can also utilize teeth to merge with CBCT. Professor, when I look at this image, facial scan and CT. CT is about hard tissue. When you do merging, in order to accurately evaluate a patient, Merging needs to be done properly. It's very important. Are there special preconditions or requirements that need to be met to do merging properly? Does it require a special landmark? Does the landmark need to match? 
as you mentioned, the CBCT and facial scan data is actually soft tissue and hard tissue data. It would be nice if x-ray could express soft tissue, but in normal cases, it doesn't. That's right. It focuses on a hard tissue. Even in the slide that you see, the teeth is the common denominator. In the case of CT and facial scan data, you need to have facial scan data with teeth exposed. You need to use that to merge with CT. You use residual teeth as the standard for merging. In CT, there are some artifacts. You need to adjust the threshold so that you can see the teeth very well and then you need to merge. As I've shown you, partially in facial scan data, dentition information is included. You need to first merge with the overall arch scan data and then merge with CVCT. You need to do that in order. Thank you. I'm going to carry on with my lecture. At times, Overall facial scan data can be prepared separately. In that case, you use a T-zone or nose to merge amongst the facial scan data. This is a scan jig that I've mentioned earlier. When you scan teeth using facial scan data, the form at times, it's not recorded properly, so I use a scan jig frequently. You can see this, but we name this as consecutive jig. We do 3D printing, and when the patient comes in, you use a silicone material so that the tooth form is registered. Teeth needs to be exposed as much as possible so that when you merge model scan or oral scan, there can be many landmarks. When you do facial scan, I have the patient to bite on it and add a scan so you can record the dentition and relation with the face. When you merge your jig and model, you merge using the landmarks where the residual teeth are. If you mark a couple of teeth position, merging is done like this. After a series of process, the positional relation between model and scan jig is merged. The patient was biting on the jig when facial scan was done and the facial scan data and the dentition position can be merged accurately. You can get to these kind of end results. You can use this to communicate with the lab and you'll be able to share a lot of information. When we talk about digital smile design, you can take into account not only the aesthetic factor in the frontal area, but in the lateral area, the amount of exposure of teeth and lip support. The occlusal plane is very clear. A la tragus line. You can see how well it is aligned. You can also adjust the transparency and you can get a lot of help. We print out the jig with 3D printing. We have a lot of stock. When the patient comes in, we use it immediately. In the case of jig for facial scan, up until case completion, you continue to keep it, and if necessary, you continue to utilize it. That's how I maintain these. In the case of edentulous patients, I make a lot of attempts. When you want to complete denture provision within one day, you can use tray to register upper and lower and do gothic arch tracing. In regards to the consecutive jig, I have designed a removable type so that it can be fixed and removed. In edentulous patients, you can also use a facial scan data at the same time. At the final stage, you can go through the try-in phase to check if it's really accurate, but you can really reduce the amount of effort that is required. This is a temporary denture. This was how it was fabricated. 
and frontal image and lateral image, you can see the overall form. You can align dentition. You can check with the antagonist model, which is 3D printed. There are some limitations in dental alignment and denture. You need to consider dynamic occlusion, such as bilateral balanced occlusion. It's very important for teeth alignment. If there's no dynamic factors within facial scan data. That is why there needs to be a lot of improvement. We need to check additionally. This is a study announced by Kyung University. Facial scan data and oral scan data were used to gain more dynamic information. When the patient does protrusive movement in the anterior area, Oral scan was taken to check the occlusion. Mathematic calculation was done. The information was gathered related to condyle guidance. A lot of effort is made for artificial teeth design. I believe facial scanners can be of significant help for dentalist patients. As mentioned, lip support is what is exposed to other people in terms of patients' perspective every single day. and. Therefore, you can use facial scans a lot. Such attempts can be observed in overseas as well. It's almost as similar to the attempts that I'm making. You take an impression of upper and lower, and you add the jig for facial scan data and do facial scan. Aesthetic evaluation is done. Midline is set. Different attempts are reported. I've talked about occlusal planes. But there are many difficult cases, such as full mouth case. If you have facial scan data, among the dentition that the patient has, there are teeth that are beyond the occlusal plane. You can find the occlusal plane three-dimensionally, and you can also make a reduction guide to adjust the teeth that are out of occlusal plane. Facial scans can be utilized in various ways. These days, it's a very early stage, but you can use facial scan to do digital mounting. Clinical studies are being done in this end. If you look at what's been reported, Compared with the traditional face bow, statistically, it doesn't really fall behind, and I believe this can be utilized significantly. This is the final part of presentation. I'm going to talk about how future advancements are going to be made. I want to make some predictions. As mentioned earlier, 3D scan data, facial scan data, it doesn't include the dynamic factor. Therefore, you need to consider occlusion. Jaw motion tracking needs to be added to have a complete 4D patient, 4D virtual patient is what I want to call this. I'm really interested about jaw motion tracking, and so is a lot of other people. As you can see, the equipment is too big, it's too bulky, it's kind of difficult to ask a patient to try this. The process is quite complicated as of yet. In terms of data, it's meaningful, but there are limitations in applying it to real-life practice. Modules have been developed a lot in ExoCAD. Jaw motion tracking can be utilized to design in CAD. If you have these equipments, you can increase accuracy in terms of dynamic occlusion. Early contact is what really takes up chair time, and you can check early contact ahead, so prosthodontic phase can become much more easier. What I've shown you earlier is quite complicated. 3Shape has introduced a patient-specific motion. You can use oral scanner unilaterally on one side, and you can record patient's movement. This is a markerless system. It is based on the tooth form. The movements can be gained. It registers only one side, so there is deviation on the other side. 
as of yet there's no complete system but i think a whole complete system will be introduced soon enough minimum use of marker or markerless system this is where we should be headed along with facial scanner when you integrate these data you'll be able to get true 4d virtual patient such attempts are actually being made even now there are reports about 4d virtual patient this has been reported in jpd using different facial scan data the patient smiling or at rest when you simulate it you can artificially check the expressions that the patient did not actually make different attempts are made and there are many technical papers in this end i believe there will be many advancement this study is done by disney there is a disney research center this was done by disney based on the changes on skin Non-linear mapping is done to track a mandibular movement. The deviation is approximately 4 to 5 millimeter. It's a still unfit for medical usage, but I believe it will be no problem in making animation at Disney. If you combine different equipments, or as Professor Cho has mentioned, if you utilize AI-based technology such as big data, even in medical field, good quality softwares can be developed. I want to talk about Unreal Engine. This has released a new system called MetaHuman. I was interested and you can design teeth in this way if you have scan data or 3d data you can move patient lips and design teeth if you look closely you can adjust the color of gingiva tooth and whether there's plaque or not tooth width and height different adjustments can be made the purpose of this is not for dental treatment but if you look at the eyes this can be adjusted as well and even in the dental field i believe we'll be able to utilize these meta human for treatment as well this is what i've prepared for today as mentioned earlier facial scan data is not being done very actively but i believe once you try it the benefits will speak for themselves in communicating with lab technicians it can be of huge help and i believe this will be used more actively in the future i hope you try it and utilize it this was what I really wanted to say and I would like to close my lecture. Professor, today's lecture was really inspiring. Even in the comments, it said it was really interesting and unheard of lecture and I really agree. I am really surprised of how the technology has advanced. So let's look at the comments. ID Mint Candy. In your opinion, clinically speaking, where is it most useful at present? Where is it most useful? I can think of two or three answers. I use it for two or three purposes, as mentioned in the interior area, in aligning facial midline and dental midline for anterior prosthesis. You can do it using photo, but you can use uh, different views from different angle. You can see ahead the patient's original dentition and the designed prosthesis, and in larger cases, you can use it for virtual face bow. You can find a closal plane. Of course, you can do it using face bow, but I use it as virtual face bow. Last but not least, for lip support, when you provide a denture or anterior prosthesis to a patient, 
You can tell how the lip support changes to the patient from the start. The patient can also provide input as to how much lip protrusion the patient wants. Especially in denture patients, patients can have a lot to say about how much the lip is protruding. Rather than just blindly saying that you have improved so much, you can provide objective data. You can merge and show the patient how much it has protruded. Therefore, it can be of great help. You can show it ahead and the patient has agreed in advance. Therefore, I believe there will be much less complaint. Yes, because the patient has accepted in the first place. At times, when you provide prosthesis, the patient can complain a lot, but this can really help. ID Choco Cookie. Can I watch this lecture again? I missed the beginning. If you visit the dental site, you'll be able to see the video. I believe it will be uploaded on Monday. You can watch it once again, of course. ID judgment. In order to really step into digital dentistry, what kind of changes do I need to make and what equipment do I need to buy? So this is clinical practice, not the dental hospital. The person is looking for your advice. If you're taking your first steps, I don't think you need to buy everything from the get-go because you need to try it out. I believe you should buy oral scanner first. That is my recommendation. I've talked about communication with a patient the primary purpose for me in using oral scanner is to show the patient what his or her oral cavity is like. When the patient first comes in, I do overall oral scan and we talk together about his or her situation. It's really of great help. I use oral scan in the case of implant prosthesis. In the case of short span implants, a single or two implants, you can get good results using oral scan. You can use scanner to really streamline the scanning and prosthesis fabrication phases. You can send it to the lab. If you have your equipment, you can do it. Otherwise, you can just send it to the lab. You can connect the accounts together ahead and work together. You can complete it and do delivery. These kind of experiences would be meaningful in the beginning. If you can do this in a smooth way, next stage you can prepare CAD and fabricate it yourself. 3D printer and milling machine. Which would you buy first? At present, I believe a 3D printer is much cheaper and you can make a temporary prosthesis. As for milling equipment, it's more expensive and it does take more time. So you have to do overtime at night. In the case of 3D printer, you can make a provisional as well as CT stand for taking CT. You can use it for temporary denture as well. There are multiple uses. There are different models. If there is oral scan data, you can print out models. Out of the two, I choose the printer. In other words, you should first get the printer and then the milling machine. After that, you should get to the facial scan. If you have facial scan, I believe you have the entire package. I believe so. I hope this answered your question. ID Yeonjushi, thank you for your response. I look forward to uh, better results in the future. ID Awesome. Currently, there is a controversy over privacy infringement and facial tagging function is suspended. Are there any legal problems when we do facial scans in Korea? I'm not really sure. You need to really be careful when doing this. Facial scans, you need to get patient to consent, of course. You can cover the eyes, of course, because it emits too much light. You can have the patient wear sunglasses. 
you cover the eyes and then scan. If you cover the eyes, it's very difficult to recognize a person. That's true. I believe that's very important. Storage and security of data needs to be thought out as well. You need to think of the possibility of leakage. You need to really be thorough. I'm not really about the face tagging function. In the case of face recognition, during immigration, or as I've mentioned in the early segment, I think this person is talking about that. When you do your banking stuff, you can just do facial recognition these days. Yes. ID Pocket Monster. What is the difference in terms of digital technology comparing Korean dental field and that of more advanced nations like the US and Europe? How long will it take for us to catch up? Not just the digital dentistry, I think a facial scan is also in line with this question. Facial scan compared with other advanced nations, there's difference with Korea. There are products available in Korea, however, Personally, based on my experience, overseas products are more advanced in my personal experience. But I think it, it's only a matter of time. Including Austin, there are many noteworthy dental companies within Korea and they're really endeavoring to push forward. Scanners of high caliber will be released soon. Do you think within two to three years? You need to check with Austin. <laughs> I can really tell you prepared a lot. ID Amalgam. If AI technology and big data continue to advance, will there be a technology for diagnosis as well? It's a question. I believe it's possible. In terms of diagnosis, different clinicians have their own styles. They each have their own different set of criteria and experiences. So I'm not sure how it will be reflected. But actually, AI and these technologies follow the style of the data which train them. They understand the style of the data they're given, yes. In terms of treatment planning and diagnosis, if I continue to feed the data which I made the determinations on, the results will reflect my style. If big data with different experiences are reflected, then the technology may be able to come up with treatment plans that a lot of people can agree to. We forgot to address one question. ID Joe, is there a product that you recommend? Is there a product that you recommend? I think the question is in regards to facial scan. The products that I have used are not that many. I'm not really sure whether we are allowed to mention certain products. If it's a problem, we'll delete it. The price range vary on the more affordable line. It's not completely cheap, but comparatively more affordable. I would recommend Bellus 3D Scanner. I use it very frequently and get good results, satisfied with it. How much is it? When I first bought it from the company, it was a very small single camera. It was about a 600,000 won, 700,000 won. And now it has evolved into ARC 4 and ARC 7. Multiple cameras are connected to take images from different angles so that the patient does not have to turn heads frequently. I'm not really aware of the price point. I believe it's within 10 million won. There's a branch in Korea, right? Yes. If you want to use high-end, there's a company called Atec, 
And the products that are available are, well, the one that I use is about the 30 million one. There are more expensive scanners. You can get high quality scans using that scanner. I like both. Earlier, there was a system where cameras surrounded the patient taking images at once. Yes, they're DSLR. One minute, please. ID judgment. Thank you for your response. It has been of great help. I think there are no more comments. Professor, thank you for the wonderful lecture. And I would like to extend my gratitude to those of you who have raised comments and questions today. The Q&A session is now over. Now we're going to select the best question of the day. Professor Kim Jong-un, could you please choose one person? The person who will win Buston and Music Tiger collaboration dental set. Can we scroll up? I have one person in mind. One of the questions from early on. What was it about? Can you scroll down a little bit more? ID Yeonjishi. So average error using AI. ID Yeonjishi has won today's prize. Congratulations. I hope you receive our gift. Thank you for showing avid interest in prosthodontics on Friday, and I hope you continue to participate. Professor Kim Jong-un, thank you for providing us a really new knowledge to us. Could you please give a word of advice to your peers who are studying hard and watching prosthodontics on Friday right now. I am honored to be here today. And I thank you all for listening in. Because of COVID, there were not a lot of experiences for me to participate in offline Congress or opportunities to provide lectures. In the past, when I provided lectures or when I went to academic congresses, I remember so many people gathering there to study, and that was really inspiring. I thought dentists study really hard. They study much harder than medical doctors in order to continue to advance their knowledge and technique. I find dentists working really hard, and I'm really inspired by them. It keeps me to study harder and put in more efforts to provide a better lecture. I'll continue to push myself to do that. You're at the forefront of digital dentistry, and I hope you lead the analog generation like me, as well as the digital generation as well. Thank you. Thank you for the wonderful lecture. Those of you watching Prosthodontics on Friday, did you enjoy the Prosthodontics on Friday seminar with Professor Kim Jong-un? I'm sure you've learned a lot. It was really meaningful in that we were able to get information about clinical application of facial scan data. As for the questions that were not addressed today, those will be responded via replies. Next time, Professor Kim Jong-tae of Yonsei University is going to talk about addressing TMJ and facial pain after implanted treatment. Thank you for watching up until late. Thank you.